Hey everybody, this is Dan the Chess Enthusiast, and in this video we're taking a look at the Polario Gambit, which I covered in my, uh, in my last video, being played at a high level of chess. Uh, this particular game took place in 2002 between two uh, Russian players. Saryanskov was playing with the white pieces, and at the time he was ranked 2364. And Novichkov was playing the black pieces, and he was ranked at the time 2420. Uh, and so we're going to get into the game here. Uh, it starts out with pawn to e4, pawn e5, pawn f4. We get into the king's gambit. The knight comes out to f3, uh, pawn down to g5, bishop to c4, push the pawn to g4. White castles, uh, black captures the knight, and white recaptures with the queen. Uh, these are all moves that were covered as book moves in my last video. Um, the queen comes out to f6. We have the pawn to e5. The queen captures the pawn, and from here we have the move that I mentioned in my last video is played most commonly nowadays in this uh, line, and that is uh, bishop captures on f7 check, drawing the king out uh, closer to the center of the board. So from here, play continues as followed. Uh, the king captures on f7. We have pawn to d4 attacking the queen. The pawn, the pawn captures, the queen captures the pawn, I'm sorry, with check. Uh, the bishop is developed to e3, and uh, note that this uh, pawn is pinned, so bishop out to e3 is a very threatening move. Um, and then from here, uh, in book moves, what you usually see is the queen coming down, coming back to f6. However, in this game, uh, Novichkov decided to play something a little different, and he played queen to g7. Uh, from here, white captured the pawn on f4 and black developed its uh, knight to f6. Uh, white developed its knight to c3, and then we have uh, the queen down to g4, uh, trying to force a queen exchange. Now, I think what black might have been thinking in this position is, you know, I'm up two minor pieces. That's six points of material. If I can trade down, uh, if I can get the queens off the board, then I'm going to be in a very safe position. Um, unfortunately, it seems that black didn't really look deep enough into the position because uh, even though black is up two minor pieces, uh, after the exchange, you're, you're going to see that it's not, it actually is going to start going down material and uh, white's tactical shots with the uh, two open files in the center of the E and the F file are really going to start to become uh, very, very deadly and ultimately too much for black to handle. So after uh, white exchanges the queens on g4 and the knight recaptures, we have a discovered check against the king. Now, not only do we have a discovered, che uh, discovered check on the king, but you'll notice that the bishop here on e5 is now attacking this rook. So this rook is definitely going to fall. Um, in the game, uh, black pulled the king over to g6. Uh, white captured the rook. And then uh, we have bishop down to g7, so the dark square bishops come off the board. And if you take a look at this position, uh, white is ahead in development, and uh, it has now really started to close the gap between material advantage. Uh, in fact, I think looking at this just quickly eyeballing it, uh, black is only up two pawns worth of material, whereas uh, if we go back to uh, this position here, uh, before this, at, at this point on move 12, uh, black was up six points of material. So this uh, queen forcing the queen exchange on g4 was definitely uh, a blunder. So um, anyway, getting back to this position, uh, from here, black, I'm sorry, white plays knight out to d5, uh, just bringing the knight closer to the center of the board. You'll notice that it's now grabbing a lot of squares, all of them in the center, and a couple of them, especially e7 and uh, f6 are very close to the enemy king. Um, oh, also one thing that I wanted to point out was that uh, if the knight is able to get to uh, c7, this rook is uh, trapped, and so this rook is going to fall. In order to prevent that, uh, black plays knight out to a6, um, which is keeping an eye on this uh, c7 pawn and also giving the uh, knight, I'm um, sorry, the rook a square to move to over here on b8. From here we have the uh, rook coming over to e1. 
Uh, so we have very, very firm control over these two files uh, in the center of the board. Uh, from here, black attacks the uh, knight sitting on d5, but uh, instead of reacting to that, white just hits a check with uh, uh, rook to e7. And from here, uh, what black played in the game was king to g8, but uh, when I looked at this game with computer analysis, uh, Actually, the computer didn't like this move. The computer favored instead uh, king to g6. And the line that the computer came up with is that the rook can come to e8, uh, the knight can be captured, um, black, I'm sorry, white can hit a check, the king can go to h5, uh, which is protecting this knight here, uh, white can play uh, rook to f3, um, Black can play uh, knight to f2, and after the king captures the knight, uh, we have d6, which is opening up access for this uh, light square bishop. If this rook ever moves off of the eighth rank, the bishop is going to be able to jump into the game. Uh, and then we have rook to g7, and according to computer analysis, this is a very equal position. Um, so that's what the computer had to say about move 19 in this position from black. Instead of playing king to g8, the computer liked king to g6. Um, nonetheless, uh, in the game, uh, black decided to play king to g8, and it continued. the game continued as followed, with uh, rook to e8 hitting another check. We have king down to g7. Uh, the knight comes over to e7, so we have all of uh, white's pieces centered on this, uh, this king, which is very exposed, there's almost no defense. The only defense that it really has is this knight at the moment, and the knight really can't do a whole lot. Uh, also in this position, if you look at it, what white is threatening is bringing the rook over to g8, and uh, again, that would just create a really, really messy position for, uh, for uh, black. In fact, after the king moves off to h6, then this knight would fall, and it would just be a really almost a lost game from that position. So in order to stop that, uh, black plays knight to f6, uh, which is keeping uh, an eye on the g8 square here. So now if the rook plays to g8, the knight is going to be able to recapture. Um, from here we have the knight check on uh, f5, and the king goes over to f7 attacking the rook. Um, but white just pulls the rook back and hits a check on e7. From here uh, the uh, king goes to f8, and then we have uh, rook on f to e1, which is uh, now connecting the rooks on this uh, open file here, the open e file. We have uh, pawn to d5, which is opening up access for the bishop. Right now the bishop is attacking the knight on f5, and so uh, white plays knight to d6. From here, play continues as follows with uh, king over to g8 in order to uh, get away from the check square that was here on f7. And we have rook uh, to f1, which is attacking currently the undefended uh, knight. Now, in this position, uh, I'm pretty sure what black saw is that moving the knight in, in this position would be very, very bad. Um, and so black just basically defend uh, abandoned defense of the knight because uh, let's just say the that black moves the knight anywhere let's just say it moves to d7 and you you know black might be thinking that now he has the square uh, here on f8 covered but once we have doubled up rooks on the seventh rank they're just completely monstrous with this knight in the vicinity there's nothing black is going to be able to do so instead of going down that line what black decided to do was simply develop its bishop out to uh, g4, at which point the knight falls on f6. Uh, play continued for a little while. As you can see here, this is uh, starting to look very, very grim for black. Um, however, uh, black did continue playing on for a little while. It played bishop to d1, attacking the pawn on c2. We have knight to e8, and in this position, Black actually resigns because the only way to stop the checkmate, because, okay, what's going to happen next uh, on the next move is let's just say uh, Black makes kind of a nothing move. Let's just say, um, what do we have here? Let's just say we have uh, Bishop to C2. Bishop captures a pawn on C2. 
we have the series of moves where the rook hits the check on g7, the king can only go to h8, and then we have checkmate with the rook on f8. So the only way to prevent that in this position is to capture the knight with the rook. And once that happens, uh, the rook falls, and, and this is a totally one game for white. So that's why facing this position in, uh, in the game, uh, Navichkov resigned. So, uh, yeah, that's the, the Masters game on the uh, Polario Gambit. As I said, it, in, in all King's Gambits, it's a very, very uh, aggressive, fast-paced game that takes place. This game was uh, certainly no exception. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you got something out of it. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.